Robert J. Morella, a.k.a. Gorilla Monsoon. Located in the Lakeview Memorial Park in Cinnamonson, which is Burlington County, New Jersey. Um, he's actually buried next to his son. About, I would say, 300 yards in front of the office. He died at the age of 62. Gorilla Monsoon. And once again, I am Thomas. And I just wanted to uh, come to this cemetery uh, to pay my respects. That is a picture of Gorilla Monsoon as a wrestler. Yes, he was a wrestler. Now, in my childhood, you know, I'm, I'm approaching, you know, 43 now. Uh, I remember Gorilla Monsoon back in the olden days uh, in WWF as being um, a play-by-play -play guy with synonymous wherever you've seen Gorilla Monsoon, Monsoon in the old WWF, you always seen Bobby the Brain Heenan. And, you know, they were a very comedic uh, duel at times, like the, the good and the bad. You know, Bobby the Brain Heenan would throw in some some controversial, you know, disparaging remarks about a wrestler sometimes. And Gorilla Monsoon would kind of jump in and say, Would you stop, please? And kind of keep him in line and kind of steer the ship back in the way it was supposed to be. Focusing on the match and focusing on good and not trying to bring up, you know, scandalous stuff. Even if you don't remember Gorilla Monsoon from uh, years uh, gone by, you might hear, if, you, if you're watching the WWE or even AEW or even wrestling uh, other wrestling companies, you, you will often hear the, the phrase uh, Gorilla Position, meaning uh, back in the day it was synonymous with Gorilla Monsoon because he would, you know, that's where he would be found during uh, WWF shows late in his career. Uh, it's, it's like a staging area just behind the entrance curtain at like uh, any given um, uh, event. You know, a live show, a TV show. Gorilla Monsoon was always observing, helping, producing. He was, you know, he was everywhere in um, wrestling. Before all this happened... Uh, before he was uh, a play-by-play -play guy, he was uh, of wrestling. He was a wrestler. He was known as Gino Morella, uh, kind of a, a proud Italian American babyface. Babyface is a uh, a good guy. That's another term for a good guy, and he would sing in an Italian prior to his matches. Even after changing his ring name, Gino stuck as Morello's nickname um, among friends and colleagues, including Jesse Ventura, who would often say Gino, like he, when he was on air with him, if you would, um, if you would listen closely. You know, Gorilla Monsoon worked in, you know, uh, federations and places of like Toronto, Calgary, St. Louis, Japan. And while working there, I mean, he was doing all right. He kind of realized that fans, at least is his opinion, and I think he's he's right. Fans paid more attention to the heel or the bad guy. That's what they paid to see, and that's what made money. So uh, Morella changed his image and grew a, a beard. I guess that's what you need to do. Even nowadays, oh, changing a look for the male uh, talent. Grow a beard. <laughs> Make him look uh, villainous. A bad guy. And that's what he did. He was now a bad guy. And in his new persona, he uh, spoke no English, ate raw meat, and drank his victim's blood. His first, that was the story, though, given, uh, they changed it up when he was on WWF 
television. Uh, his manager, Bobby Davis, claimed to have discovered Monsoon uh, walking, wandering nude in a mountain stream. Huh. How about that? And in the ring, he was a guy that kind of just dominated his opponents with uh, vicious chop. Uh, and his signature move uh, was the airplane spin. <laughs> you know, the airplane spin. You pick your opponent up and you spin him around. And he gets all dizzy and then you drop him. At least I think that's what the airplane spin is. If Muhammad Ali was around, you could ask him how that airplane spin was, because Gorilla Monsoon put him, the great Muhammad Ali, in the airplane spin. You know, we fast forward now a couple of years. Morello, you know, had a very, you know, pretty successful in-ring career. We're now looking to him as, you know, after, you know, after his uh, in-ring work, his retirement, he would become... And there you see the grave of Joseph Morella, his son, who was a referee, and uh, he passed away too. But, you know, uh, and now in retirement, Morella would be teamed up because Vince McMahon, now the Vince McMahon that you know in 1982, needed a commentary team to head up uh, TV programming. So it was... Re uh, it was Morella with n also the recently retired Jesse the Body Ventura uh, working as a team um, early on. They had great, uh, great chemistry. I remember them as well, you know, in the earlier days. Uh, and Ventura was uh, kind of the, you know, the, the pro heel, the pro guy, bad guy commentator. And Morella was for the good guy, making cases for the good guy. And Ventura would make cases for the bad guy, the, the person that you are supposed to hate. And Ventura would kind of justify why, no, you shouldn't hate him. You should love him. And this, this duel of, like, uh, Ventura and Monsoon was kind of so successful that, you know, even to modern day now, this is what... And people kind of strive to, to kind of copy, uh, emulate. You always want to face or a good guy and, and a heel, a bad guy commentary team. This is what a lot of people strive to hear, and this is apparently what works. So Ventura eventually left the WWF in um, 1990, and he was then paired uh, Morella with Bobby the Brain Heenan, kind of, that's when you fast forward it around that time, that's when I really, like, really, really at, you know, eight, nine years old was paying attention to WWF, and that's really what I uh, remember. It was a great uh, team, you know, uh, again, like I said, um, the yin to the yang, um, you know, they would, uh, the good guy and the bad guy. It was almost like a shtick. Uh, Morella, or Gorilla, and Bobby the Brain Heenan. Uh, they did various sketches together where, um, you know, they would be arguing again. Good versus bad. Various sketches that they did, uh, for WWF programming along, you know, with the commentary team. The commentary that they would do for... Uh, wrestling events and it was magical uh, if you listen to Bobby the Brain Heenan's um, induction speech you heard that he wished that Gorilla Monsoon was there Gorilla Monsoon unfortunately passed away pretty young relatively young at the age of uh, 62 um, in 19 um, you know, uh, before, you know, before Bobby the Brain Heenan was inducted. Remember, uh, right after, you know, Jim Ross, who hasn't been with the company for quite a few years, Jim, Wa Jim Ross uh, wound up replacing um, Gorilla Monsoon. 
So he eventually uh, is get, gets moved to All American Wrestling with Lord Alfred Hayes, which was another great commentator in April of 1993. So you know he was being phased out, and he eventually uh, would even work uh, work the uh, the broadcast of SummerSlam 1993 on WWF Radio. How about that? You guys remember WWF Radio Blast from the Past? Uh, he did King of the Ring 1994 with Randy Savage, as well as covering... He did a few episodes of Monday Night Raw in 93 and 94. That's whenever, you know, Vince McMahon was not available to commentate. Uh, you know, and he did sporadic work. Um, various work for uh, Coliseum Video, which was a classic. Uh, last really play-by-play -play was 1994. And he would remain in a backstage role and appeared on air frequently, you know, storyline, various different storylines in that time, especially on uh, 95, where he would replace uh, the WWF president, Jack Tunney, which was a storyline. Just a great broadcaster. Um, I think to me, one of the greatest. I mean, a lot of people say Jim Ross, which is fair. But Gorilla Monsoon is definitely one of the greatest, if not the greatest. Rest in peace, Gorilla Monsoon.